Morning folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I thought we'd continue with our basic series, stepping back a little bit for some of our newer subscribers, people new to bushcraft, survival, woodcraft and trekking, whatever you choose to call it. And we're going to move on to shelters. We talked a little bit about yesterday when we pulled out our kit. We're going to stay with that kit throughout this basic series so that we're using the same items all of the time. And we're going to set up a couple different shelter configurations today and show you how to make them the most optional and the most comfortable for you in the eastern woodlands late summer, early fall. Temperatures probably at night down in the lower 50s, sometimes the high 40s. Temperatures during the day can be anywhere from the upper 70s to the upper 80s. Stay with me. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about the tarp that we're going to use to set these examples up with. Now, this is not by 7x7 Pathfinder tarp. It's exactly the same, except this one's made in Europe, in the UK. That one's made in the US. This one's quite a bit less expensive, probably $30, $40 less expensive. Same heavy-duty still line material, heavy-duty tie-outs. And this one also, like I said, creates a poncho. And that is a big advantage because it makes your gear more adaptable to a scenario. So I'm going to pull this thing out real quick and show you this. It basically has a stuff sack that it comes in. When you pull it out, it has an area on it that is Velcro shut. And that Velcro area is actually off center. And you'll see that when we set this configuration up. But what that's meant for is that's meant to be opened up if needs be. And it has an oversized hood inside of it so that I can now take this and put it over my head take my hat off for a minute and I have a large poncho with a large hood on it and it's got drawstrings on the whole thing so you can back it up and draw it down around your face if you want to just like that it does have a drawstring hood or if you want to wear a hat underneath it, I'm not sure I can wear this big dude underneath it, but we'll see. Yes, I can. I can wear this wide brimmed hat underneath it and really shed any rain or weather off of me. And then for me, I just take these Velcros, tuck them down in the front like that, and attach them. And then I'm ready to rock and roll. And you can see. I'll drop this camera down a little bit so you can see how far this hangs down. You can see on this thing, it, on me it goes pretty much to the ground on the edges. And the front of it's about a foot off the ground. And there's the back. The back's going to be a little bit longer because as I said, the hood is off center. So we're going to use this tarp today for our sheltering configurations. It has lots and lots of tie-out points on it. It's a really good, versatile, lightweight tarp if you're looking for something that is lightweight. And I'll show you how to set this up in lots of different ways right now. Okay, guys, the first shelter I want to talk to you guys about today is called the Diamond or the Plow Point Shelter. This works exceptionally well if your tarp is square. I prefer square tarps because I believe they're a lot more versatile than rectangular tarps are. I like them at least 7x7. Seven 8 by 8 is a little bit better, but you're sacrificing a little bit of weight there. I'm only 5 foot 8, 7 foot's big enough coverage for me. If you're over 6 foot, you're going to want an 8 by 8 tarp. 10 by 10 to me is overkill, unless you are in an area where it's just pouring, gushing down rain all the time, or it's very, very, very cold, and you're trying to make a really heavy duty shelter. So 7 by 7, 8 by 8, that's what I prefer. This tarp happens to be 7 by 7. A square tarp, again, will make the most versatile tarp for you over a rectangle. And that's the problem with most commercially bought tarps, like the ones you buy at Home Depot and Lowe's and places like that. They're almost 99.999% of the time, they're a rectangle tarp. And they're not near as versatile as a square. So let me show you how this works on this diamond. All we really need to do is find a fork tree, which I have behind me. This is a maple tree that has a fork coming right out of the ground. I've got four ABS plastic stakes. I've told you guys in a lot of videos before, I always carry stakes. And I always carry at least four. Sometimes I even carry six. But for a basic kit, I generally carry four. They don't weigh anything. They're versatile. They can be used for a lot of things. And it keeps me from having to try to find sticks in an emergency or cut stakes if I'm in a hurry to get my shelter up and down. And like I said, they don't hardly weigh anything. And I prefer them greatly over stakes like aluminum and titanium 
because I have bent those stakes before and they do make a lot more noise in the long run in your pack than the plastic ones do. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on stakes. Let's get this diamond shelter set up. All we really have to do, like I said, is find ourselves a fork in a tree. Once we have found this fork in the tree, we're going to get our tarp out. And like I said, this hood is off center, so it really doesn't matter. In a diamond shelter, it's going to be crossways anyway a little bit. And all we're going to do is pull one of our tabs straight through the fork, and we're going to shove a stake in it. And this could be a stick. It wouldn't even have to be a stake. Just like this. At whatever level we want our tarp to be in the end. Okay, once I have the opening at the level that I want it, then I'm just going to keep this tart taut on that spot and come back to the back corner at an angle just like this and put another stake through the next loophole and shove it in the ground. Just like that. I have no problem putting my boot on these stakes in softer ground. It's not going to hurt it a bit. Then all I have to do is come and pull out my sides. Okay, this type of shelter configuration has been around since very early times. And it's called the diamond or the plow point for a reason. It looks like the point of a plow. The shelter has been around for, you know, two, three hundred years. It's a very quick up-down type shelter. It gives you about two minutes, you can set a shelter up and be done with it. If you didn't have a fork tree, you could always just tie a loop on the tree to put your stake through to hold on to it. It's just easier if you find a fork. Then you just run your stake between the fork and hold it up. Now, this is plenty to get you out of the weather. You can make improvements to this shelter to get more room inside simply by putting a string on here with a toggle and lifting it up in the center. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, you can see by looking at this diamond setup that there is a little bit of space right here, almost like a trough in the middle, because the middle of this tarp isn't picked up. That's not going to hurt anything if it's a really quick emergency shelter, and we just need to get in there and get dry. But if we plan on spending a couple of days in it, we want to get a little bit more headroom, all we really need to do is take our rope, and you remember we talked about the jam knots, okay? What we're going to do is, we've got just a bowline loop in one end of this. The other end of this, we're going to make a jam knot. Now, if we turn this rope over and we pull the tag end through, then we've made an, a loop jam on the end. So what we want to do is we want to do the opposite of that for a Canadian jam knot, which means we want to pull this end through, which is going to force this down this way, and it will make this knot right here the actual jam in the end. So we'll turn this over, give ourselves just a little bit of tag, and again, instead of pulling the tag end through, we're going to pull the other end through, and that's going to be our jam. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to make that big enough that I can take a small pine cone, put it inside my tarp, just like this, And I want to put it about halfway down. And you can do this before you actually put your last stake in if you want to. Or you can do it after. And I'm just going to tie that jam knot right around that pine cone. So I've got to make sure I get that whole pine cone in there just like that. Now I've got that pine cone trapped in that jam. Then I can pull this up on a tree further away. And I'll show you that here in just a second. It's going to give me a whole lot more headroom and tighten the shelter up considerably. So now what I've done is I've taken that low hanging ridge in the center, jam looped that pine cone in there, ran it to a tree back off in the distance to pick the middle of that shelter up with my 20 foot piece of paracord. And that gives me a huge amount of expanded headroom inside that shelter for me to be able to sit up inside there and do work in inclement weather. 